Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. We are continuing our series today on algebraic techniques by looking at an introduction to equations. And the next few videos are going to be really focused on equation solving. We're going to look firstly at what an equation is, what the different parts of an equation are, how to write an equation from a worded description and talk a little bit about what the word solve means. We're not actually going to get into much solving today. It's just an introduction to some key concepts around solving equations. So firstly, what is an equation? Well, so far we've been mainly looking at expressions and here's some examples of some expressions we've talked about. Whole numbers by themselves, letters with numbers combined, different terms added together. And an equation is different to those because it includes an equal sign. So you remember an expression has no equal sign, but an equation does. So here are um, an example of what an equation could look like. We've got 3y plus 7x equals 2z plus 5. So we've got three um, different types of variables here, a y, an x and a z. We've got four terms all together. Um, and there are three key parts to any equation. Now this is not rocket science really. It's actually quite straightforward. Firstly, we've got our equal sign. We've just talked about that. This is what makes it different from an expression. Then we've got the left hand side of the equation and we'll refer to that in this video and future videos as LHS for left hand side. And then we've got right hand side, which would be RHS. So you've got three parts of the equation, both sides of the equation and your equal sign in the middle. Okay, we're going to have a quick chat now about how to make an equation from a word description. In our first example, we've got, for example, the sum of m and 8 is 23. So if we look back at our previous videos, it's about three or four videos back, we looked at writing expressions from descriptions. And it follows the same principles that we followed in that video. So if you find worded problems a little bit difficult, that might be a good one to watch first. And we have a free resource with that video where we provide you key vocabulary and what is being required. And that will be helpful for this video too. So our keyword here is the word sum and sum means to add. So we are taking m and 8. The sum of those is m plus 8 equals 23. Now when you're asked to write the equation, you're not being asked to find the value of m. You're only being asked to write the actual equation using the words. And Solving is a different thing. Solving is not just writing the equation, it's actually finding the value of m that makes the equation true. And we'll get onto that shortly. Here's our second example. Emily purchased three apples and four bananas at a total cost of $4.50. And we need to come up with an equation from that situation. Now, the very first thing you need to do is define what are called the variables, the letters that we're going to use to make this situation come about. Now, you could use any letter of the alphabet you want to. I'm just going to be choosing the letter A for the cost of an apple and the letter B for a cost of banana. And typically, it makes sense to use letters that relate to what you're actually working with. Now, it's really important to be precise. A lot of students will say, let apples be A and bananas be B. That would not possibly refer to the cost, but it could also refer to the weight of the apples and bananas, could even refer to the quantity of apples and bananas. So you need to be precise with your language. And this is what we call a let statement. So we're writing a let statement, let the cost be A, let the cost be B. This means we're creating the scenario that we can use to then set up our algebra solving sentence. So now we're going to use the letter A and the letter B to write our equation. So we've got three lots of A, three times A, or three lots of apples, plus four lots of bananas, four times B, is going to equal 4.50. And we don't need to use the dollar sign when we're writing equations. So leave your dollar sign off. Now you might be wondering to yourself, how do I know if I got that equation right? And this is where we perform a logic check. Now if I knew that apples cost a dollar and bananas cost a dollar and I wanted to work out what the total cost was. Let's put $4.50 to a side. Well, I would, if I had three apples, I would do three times one and then I would add, there's my word and here which tells me I'm adding, four times one. So three lots of apples, three times A plus four times A, that's how I, four times B, sorry, that's how I know I got the first part of this equation right. So have a bit of a logic check, use an easy number like one or a 10, and then um, you don't actually have to solve 
okay you're not being asked to solve to find the cost of the apples or the cost of the bananas you're simply being asked to write the sentence that explains the situation so put the four dollars fifty to one side use some easy numbers to work with like a one or a ten and ask yourself if I had to work out the total cost what would I do what would the calculation be and that's what we've got here replacing those costs with an A and a B let's talk a little bit more about what solve actually means solving um, sometimes we've got these equations where we've got no variables so in this situation you can see we've got a six point plus six plus two on the left hand side a ten take away two on the right hand side 6 plus 2 is 8, 10 take away 2 is also 8, 8 equals 8, that's pretty logical. And we would say that's a true equation because 8 definitely is equal to 8, so it's a true equation. If I changed it up and got rid of the plus sign and made that into a minus, then I'd have 6 take away 2 is 4, 10 take away 2 is 8, that's not true, and that's a false equation. We don't see too many false equations in algebra because really, they don't really aren't very useful in real life we're trying to find true equations now when we have variables thrown in the mix what we're trying to do so we've got variables here x's and x's what we're trying to do here is work through a range of procedures to find out the true value of x so that the equation will be true so that this side will actually be equal to this side now at the moment we don't know what x's value is we're not going to worry about x's value in this video in future videos we'll work it out but for the moment all we're trying to understand is what the word solve means so x could be any number in the universe a negative number positive number a fraction a decimal or a whole number and we need to find out and do a series of techniques which is involving moving variables and numbers from left hand side of the equation to the right hand side of the equation across that equal sign so that we can find the value of x and that's called solving the equation it makes the equation true now you're going to want to stay tuned for our upcoming videos because we're going to show you how to do that a great way that you can check to make sure that you've solved the equation properly is to use our skill of substitution that we talked about in our previous video so let's say we did a range of techniques and we found out that x was equal to 10. well then what we're going to do is we're going to then replace on the left hand side of the equation the x with the 10 so 4 times 10 plus 7 would actually give us 47 replace it over here 9 times 10 take away 5 gives us 85 well that's actually not a true equation so x is not equal to 10 and that's a good thing to check at the very end of your solving process by substituting it in and seeing if it's true and if you have not made a true equation you have not solved it properly we're going to talk about this a lot more over the coming videos which you are not going to want to miss did you find today's video helpful did it help you understand a little bit more about what an equation is and how it's different to an expression well if you did there are ways that you can engage with us you can like and subscribe to the channel hit that notifications button so you'll know when the next video is available because we're going to be solving one step equations in our next video Tell us in the comments or share this video with a friend or a teacher or a family member and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's a great way to stay in touch and have a little fun too. So we're going to be doing lots and lots of solving over the upcoming videos. We're going to start fairly easily with one step equations and move all the way up to solving with powers. We're going to then move into some index laws and some algebraic fractions. And then after that, we're taking it into the world of quadratics and polynomials. It's going to get hard and hectic for those of you in senior maths. Thank you so much for watching today. If you've got any questions about anything you saw in today's video, you can contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Thank you again. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.